31 meter new marine from 2010 with flybridge. She was built in Turkey. Uh, we are going to make a full walkthrough video today on board. This boat has four cabins for eight guests and potentially a fifth cabin. The fifth cabin on the foredeck has been converted to a lounge. I'm going to show you more about that during the walkthrough video. She's powered by two C-32 Caterpillar engines with very low engine hours and with two uh, generators also with relatively uh, low hours. Uh, very nicely kept inside, very small uh, aesthetic issues. I'm going to show you all the details uh, as we go along this video. If you want to learn more about this boat, visit her webpage by using the link at the video description below. You will find there her photos, specification list, general arrangement, and additional information. So we are starting the video today from the stern. The boat is moored alongside. Uh, she has a passerelle, hydraulic passerelle, now it's hidden there. So you can uh, make the Mediterranean mooring with her as well. There is a electrical uh, ladder here for swimming. And from here, the water is clear enough to see the stern thruster from side power. She also has a bow thruster as well from side power. Now, there is a very generous uh, swim, swimming platform here. Uh, it is a fixed swimming platform. Uh, but if you can see here, there is, a, um, there is a big hatch here. And when it's open, you can uh, actually see the big jet ski. Uh, the operation or the launching of this jet ski is done by this crane and there are two small cradles that uh, is, is put here and then the dinghy which is this Williams 2.85 uh, can be also uh, put here and stored while the boat is cruising. So uh, later on or at the end part of the video we will visit through uh, this door or the side door the crew accommodation and the engine room but today we are going to uh, start from the main deck, climbing few stairs up. The condition is in a reasonable condition. There are a few places that needs replacement, but all in all, it's in a reasonable condition. Beautiful aft deck. The tick deck has been uh, serviced with uh, tick oil. So it has a little bit of uh, this yellowish remains of it. Uh, it can be removed with uh, some materials and bring it back to the natural look, unless you prefer to have it uh, with this uh, a little bit uh, oily look. So we are moving forward. Uh, this is the place for the uh, four cabin main deck and it has been converted to be a lounge. As I mentioned in the intro, we will see it soon. Sunbathing areas here and also here. Let's have a turn the camera and see how this boat looks from this angle. Down here, massive windlasses from Data. Data is a very known Turkish brand chains look uh, completely new and from here we will move astern and we will go and start our tour from the flybridge windows are in good condition same for the gel coat paint might need a little bit of polishing here and there, but all in all, it's in good condition. Some corrections that I, manage, that I mentioned uh, in the beginning is for the teak, these kind of things. It is basically pretty much local. Now, here, here is another entrance to the crew area and the engine room. As I said, we are going to visit it as the last part of our station. 
And here again, we are in this uh, beautiful aft deck. And from here, we will climb up and we will go to check the flybridge. It's a beautiful, huge flybridge. Most of it is covered by a hard top with some uh, canvas uh, area that you can open and see the stars. And this area obviously is uh, exposed to the sun, is a sunbathing area. So let's turn the camera, look forward. And here on my starboard side, under this uh, mattresses area, there is a big jacuzzi. The half part of the hard top. And then this uh, moving shading, which can be open electrically uh, if you want to see the stars at night, or it's not warm enough or hot enough, and you can enjoy the blue sky. Very large dining table here, which probably will accommodate more than 10 guests around it, with some. Uh, sunbathing area or beds on the other side here there is a small bar with three stools and just behind it we can see the sink and a frying surface electrical barbecue underneath there is a small beverage fridge and ice maker. Let's proceed uh, slightly forward, looking again at this dining table. And just behind me, there is a TV screen protected by, in this uh, transparent box and a small sitting area and we continue further forward and this is the external helm with seats on both sides here and here basically the navigation equipment here is from Raymarine two big screens uh, E140 from Raymarine the autopilot and the multi-display, which are ST70. There are two units here, one here and one here. And of course, there are the uh, controllers for the uh, bow thruster and aft thrusters and the uh, throttles. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this boat has a sea keeper stabilizers. It has uh, four different units. I'm going to show you some of them as we go down. Uh, so that's a zero speed uh, system. And having said that, we are inside the pilot house. It has one big uh, pilot chair here. And this is the corridor of the accommodation, which we will visit soon. And let's have a quick look here as well. So here again, we have these two E140 Raymarine large screens and the bow thruster and aft thrusters controller, of course, the throttles, two VHF machines here from uh, Raymarine, uh, the main engine controllers, Caterpillar, there are two C32 engines here at the moment with approximately 1,170 hours. Uh, two Cummins Onan generators. We can see the displays here. Navtex receiver. And these are the controllers for the Seakeeper. There are four different units here. One, two, three, four Seakeeper. And this is the place to uh, start and operate uh, the stabilizer, the gyro stabilizer. So from here, we will step down. Um, down into the corridor and we will make our way 
back through the corridor. This is the way to the accommodation. And there is a day head here, which is very close to the salon area and dining area. And here we are, here we are in this beautiful salon and dining area. Looks very nice, very modern somehow. Not super modern, but not a conservative combination of wood and white. Very nice large screen from LG here. And we are going to turn the camera and start it from here again. So this is the salon. Very good proportion between the length and the width. Ceiling is in good condition. Good light system. The only thing that uh, one might want to consider to change here is to put a little bit of a larger table here. I guess uh, in this part of the world, most of the dining is done outside, but if you want to have a, a big dinner, uh, you might want to consider to put a little bit of a longer chair here and drop this uh, couch. So we will move to the port side to check the galley. Let's check some of the storage places here. A lot of storage places for wine glasses and some tableware down here and so on and so forth. And we will go through this door. It's a sliding door here. Oops, which I guess, okay, it's locked somehow. But anyway, this is the galley. It's a very reasonable size galley. Let's go all the way inside and I will explain the details as we go out. So there is a big stove here. Here on the, um, on the port side there is a big door so you can go out from here and make service to the foredeck or to the flybridge without the need to move from the salon. Oven, very large oven from Siemens. Sink. Some working surfaces. Up here storage spaces. Quite deep. Down here, there is a dishwasher from Siemens, fridge and freezer. Further down, big coffee machine from Siemens and a professional microwave from Siemens. And facing it, there is a wine fridge. So last look at this kitchen, galley, again, big uh, working surface here on this side. It's pretty reasonable size galley uh, for this size of a boat. Okay, turning the camera back to the salon. Now we have a good chance to see the salon from this angle again. And from here, we will make our way forward. There is a separation door here, again, a sliding door to the corridor. And then again, on my right hand side, there is a day head, which is very useful on this deck. Another uh, door outside here on the starboard side, this door. And we are moving forward to check a big lounge which was originally, to my opinion, was built to be a master cabin on the main deck, but uh, the first owner most likely preferred to do a big lounge here. Actually, it's a beautiful lounge. It has a big sofa, as you can see in front of the camera, big windows, which are now shaded. There's a lot of sun outside, and a huge Samsung TV facing the sofa. Coffee table here in the center, 
and behind me kind of a small office that can be used by the owner underneath a few stairs down there is kind of a service area this one with a microwave and fridge and big uh, working surface coffee machines now um, I'm sure that this boat was originally was built for a fifth cabin and I will show you why this area uh, which we are standing at the moment uh, was supposed to be the shower and toilet it's quite a typical design to this uh, uh, configuration and you can also see behind here that there is a lot of storage place for personal uh, clothing hanging locker and shelves and so on so I assume that it will be very easy to turn back or relatively easy to turn back this space into a master cabin on the main deck while the shower and toilet will be here and then uh, the double bed will be uh, placed somewhere in this space and let's go to see the ensuite of this area so you can immediately understand that it was originally built for full use of the master it is all furnished with this brownish nice marble and it has toilet and two sinks and a very large shower So that was the lounge slash master potential, potentially master cabin on the main deck. It's a quick last look into that. And from here we will go, we will step outside of this uh, lounge and we will go to the lower deck to explore the additional four cabins that this boat has to offer so it's kind of a pyramid which you have four stairs in each side as you can see and we will start going forward and down and we will start by checking the cabin on the port side which is basically the master cabin quite easy recognize it surprisingly it's it's quite big very comfortable has a lot of lights from this very big and uh, windows which is f in front of the bed TV facing the the bed a small sitting place and a makeup table a mirror inside and a stool and we are moving deep inside this master cabin on the lower deck port side and again very beautiful ensuite with this uh, brownish marble theme two sinks graved in the in the marble a step to the toilet and a huge huge shower which extends from one side to the other of this uh, ensuite everything on this boat is a uh, super clean odorless um, perfectly clean and nice so we will go from here to explore the next cabin going back into the corridor and the next cabin is a twin guest cabin two beds and it has an ensuite toilet and sink and a very reasonable size shower so that was the 
second cabin and from here we will step up again four stairs in the corridor and go down again four stairs to explore the last two cabins and this is the aft port side cabin it's a double bed cabin beautiful cabin very nice light system create very nice atmosphere it has a small TV facing the the bed and a good size ensuite the toilet and two sinks and a good size shower let's go back to the cabin and have a look from this angle now here we can see uh, the area which is a, there is a dressing corner here again with a mirror and additional drawers for uh, uh, storing personal belongings actually it's a sliding door yeah hanging locker very deep and large and generous and on the other side there are some shelves so you have plenty of space here to store your personal belongings so we will step uh, outside of this cabin looking at the last cabin this one has a little bit of a light issue i'm not sure if it's the bulb or it's kind of a, a other issue so it's a little bit dark sorry about that and it has its own suite here it's pretty much uh, similar to the cabin that we saw earlier which is a side by side to the master cabin <clears throat> okay so that was the accommodation and our last part of the tour today will be the engine room and the crew area we are stepping up to the main deck and going all the way back through the salon another chance to see this beautiful salon and we will enter the engine room through the side door from the port side so here we are in the port side and we will go through these stairs and through this door and as you can see the door is high and this is a seaworthy requirement if you have waves that they will not pour inside the hull and we are going down now this is the pantry area which the crew can uh, have a rest and a meal there is a stove here and a sink and a small fridge underneath now, it's a good chance to show the sea keeper one of the sea keeper units is located here this is how it looks like a big big ball there are four units like this two of them are in the aft garage under the water platform another one is in the engine room uh, this is the crew area which we are going to explore as the last station for today but first we go inside and let's explore this uh, engine room has a lot of space two engines from caterpillar as mentioned before c32 each one of them is with 1800 hours sorry 1800 horsepower and with 1170 hours running hours which is super low for a 2010 boat there are two uh, generators here from coming on and one here and the other one is here each one of them has approximately 3200 running hours now this boat has uh, 11400 liters of uh, fuel uh, so that's quite typical for this size and type of boat a very reasonable amount uh, you can see the range calculations in the in the website 
Uh, another technical room through a, a door here. And what we can see here is the air conditioning system, uh, some uh, bilge pump, the main bilge pump painted in uh, red, uh, electrical panel for the generator, electrical panels for the gyro uh, stabilizers, some inverters and uh, chargers for batteries here on the wall. And down there in the corner, there is a water maker. I will put the production uh, of this water maker in the website. So that was the Angel Room. If you want to learn more about this boat, you can visit her webpage by using the link at the video description below. And just before we leave this uh, room, you can see here the huge master vault gel batteries. There are six pieces here, and behind them another six pieces. Uh, so it means 12, 12 units multiply 2 volts makes it 24 volts and each is with uh, 1250 ampere hours. So it's quite a nice uh, battery bank. So we are going inside again the engine room. It's another good chance to see this engine room from a different angle. Uh, the only thing that I would do here is a little bit of uh, paint corrections on the engines, but aside from that, it looks very clean and tidy and nice. So we are uh, walking astern back into the pantry. Now there are three crew cabins here. Um, one is here with double bed and as you can see uh, only one bed is available the other one is used for storage uh, there is a toilet and shower in here so that that is uh, crew cabin number one and we are going uh, on the corridor aft and you there is a washing machine and drying machine here uh, for laundry and then again the last two cabins here one is on the starboard side, it is totally uh, dedicated for storage, as you can see, spare parts and so on. It has an ensuite there, but um, uh, again, it is full with uh, some uh, spare parts. And then there is the last crew cabin, which also one bed, one bed is available, the other one is uh, used for storage, and also it has its own um, its own bathroom and shower around here. So that was the new Marine 31 meter from 2010. Uh, she's a great boat. Uh, might need a little bit of uh, shine up at the external parts, but all in all, she's a beautiful boat. So here we are. It's nearly 30 degrees here today.